Good morning, good morning, and welcome to Living in Your Purpose. I am Dr. Pat. It is a pleasure to be with you this morning. Good morning, a good morning. A little bit about myself. I'm a native of Florida. I am from Fort Lauderdale. Um, I hold a doctorate in business, a master's in human resource management, and a bachelor's in business. Um, I am the owner operator of Sublime Communications as well as Sublime Enterprises. Today, 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 I am so excited. My guest today is none other than Mr. Anthony R. Page. Good morning. Good morning. Glad to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Tell the um, listeners, who is Anthony Page? Um, first of all, I want to thank you for having me on your show. I was t telling my wife, and she said, well, who is Dr. Pat? I said, she's, she's bold, she's brilliant, and she's boisterously beautiful. I thank said, I you. love it. Um, so you. I always enjoy talking to you, so thank you for having me. Um, me, um, definitely a child of God, definitely somebody who's, uh, you know, walking one day at a time in his purpose, and it took me a while to get to that place, and you went through a number of wilderness experiences to to get me to the place where I can truly come into a line and find his will one day at a time, and, and it, it's working for me. Um, you know, being humble and um, not letting my pride get in the way of my success. So that's, in a nutshell, how, how that translates is my ability to tell stories. Um, I've been a storyteller since I was a kid without knowing it. I was a little kid in the backyard with his Hot Wheels cars and Star Wars men, and, and I would build these worlds. I'm, playing in the dirt. I got sticks and bark and I'm building little houses and castles and creating all of these narratives. Um, I didn't know I was in training at that point to become a director. Um, I was just playing. But at 23, um, I had a mentor. He said, you're a director. I'm like, no, no, I'm an actor. But a, a number of years later, when I first directed something, I was like, oh yeah, it just came it just came organically, it was there. I had to really work hard to be a strong actor, but directing was just like, whew. I was like, oh, okay, I understand it now. So um, I'm directing a number of projects, um, you know, in film, television, and theater on the independent side. Um, I do have some opportunities to work with larger companies, but I like the independent um, side. I, you know, much like Tyler Perry said a number of years ago, he said, well, about six months ago, he said uh, he's building his own table. I love that. Absolutely. You know, instead of being a high paid employee, you just build your own. And then whatever I build and however far I'm able to get in my life, I can give that to my son. Legacy. I can't really give my son a job. You that's know? true. So that's that's me. I'm building an independent um, film, television and theater company called Blue Bistro Creative. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Mr. Anthony, Mr. Yes, Anthony, it's always a pleasure to see you. I'm so excited. Um, we don't have long 30 minutes be going by pretty fast yes. so we're going to we're going to jump right on into this so where are you from south carolina i'm a country boy all day born and bred okay. so right on the georgia carolina border it's actually a suburb of augusta georgia so we're right on the south carolina and georgia border and, and you know augusta is the main city and then north augusta south carolina is a suburb of, of augusta so that's home that's okay. where i was that was where I was born and bred. So. Okay. For you guys that don't know, Mr. Um, Anthony Page is an independent film director, creator. If you have a book, you want to bring it to life, you want to bring it to the screen, Mr. Page is the one that you need to talk to. He's an incredible man of God and just a pleasure to be around. So, you are living in your purpose. Yes. Tell me about that. Um hit a brick walls a thousand miles an hour a number of times will, will, will humble you um, because one of my favorite things when I was in my early 20s was I know I know I know so you couldn't tell me anything right and um, I did have all this talent I did have a strong work ethic but my ego just got in the way it just kept getting in the way and I didn't understand it was ego at the time um, but it was it's difficult for people to work and create in that environment when you can't when you can't receive guidance and instruction. Um, and that was, that was big for me. Um, so it evolved to the point where I had to hit those brick walls at a thousand miles an hour, you know, just bam, bam, and you just keep falling down and you're like, okay. But out of each time I fell down, certain pieces were just left there on the, on the floor and I, and, and I got up, I think, stronger. Um, so that has made me who and what I am and also informed the kind of stories that I want to tell. Because I remember at one of those low points, I said, all right, God, I'm tired. What do you want mm. me to do? What do you want me to do? 
because the struggle, the inner mental, emotional struggle was so hard. And, you know, promiscuity, promiscuity came into that. Alcohol and drugs came into that. And I was just worn out. I'm like, I have no more. What do you want me to do? I said, if you want me to go in this corner and mop these floors, I'll do that. Because I, right now I want peace. Wow. Um, it was that terrible. I mean, even to the point that, I, you know, I said, I don't even want to be here anymore in that context. But let me tell you how large my pride was. I was too afraid to off myself because I was like, you know, Anthony killed himself. <laughs> you know, I'm dead worried about people, what they would what say they when would I'm think. dead. See, I said, look at that. So it, it, it was a process of me just kind of peeling back the onion and understanding who I am. I think my pride was so big as a protective measure it was fear that was surrounding me there was a lot of fear so boom i kind of in my own mind blew myself up to kind of keep me safe mm -hmm. you know I, I, sur I, I surrounded myself with all of this overconfidence and pride and ego to kind of keep me um from being harmed in, in a way in many ways like i said out of that period one of my favorite scriptures was Revelation 12, 11. So it said, we overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. Absolutely. So we got the blood of the lamb. And I said, well, what is my testimony? For so long, I was afraid to share that truth. Because I know I'm, I'm Facebook live and you're live and we're on air. And I'm telling some people some very raw and real things because that's what keeps me free. It said, you'll know the truth and the truth shall set you free. That's right. That's a big piece of what informs my work. Um, because at that low point, you know, it came in my spirit. He said, Tony, tell my stories. I was like, so I thought it was the life of Jesus, the Easter story, you know, so I started doing all the stuff that was uniquely centered in the, you know, Christian tradition, pulling out of the Bible, but I knew that wasn't it. Then I had an opportunity with an organization called Communities and Schools. Mm -hmm. And these, it's an alternative school for kids who've had trouble in regular public schools. So they put them, they separate them from the rest of the population in a separate school. So they brought me in to do some theater with these young people. And me coming in with all my education and experience, I want to do August Wilson or Shakespeare. These kids weren't interested. <laughs> and so I, I struggled with it for a couple of days. And I said, okay. And I sat down in a round table with the counselors and we talked to the students. And I got to hear their stories. I was like, huh. What they had gone through was so much more compelling than, or just as compelling as anything August Wilson or Shakespeare wrote. So I took their stories, changed the scenarios a little bit, changed the names, and I created a series of monologues and short scenes based on their life. It was one of the most profound theater experiences I've ever had, and I knew, I said, this is it. Wow. Testimonial theater. Tony, tell my stories, because it's not just the people in the Bible, but we're his people too, and those are his stories. See, this young, there's a young girl, for example, who was in the school, was 14 years old, her mother was on drugs, real bad crack. She got on the school bus, and her mother was walking by and everybody in the bus was laughing. Ah, look at that crackhead. And that was her mom. Mm. She said she just froze and she just sunk down into the seat. So imagine that. And sometimes she would go home. Her mom wouldn't come home for days. Um, the lights would be out. The, the, there's no food. But she's got to go to school and be everything she can be in that environment. We don't know. And, and you know, they say, oh, she's a troubled youth. But you don't understand what this young lady is going to. She's 14 with no support. And her mother is going through an amazing struggle and for some people that's funny but for her it wasn't funny no not at all so those are the kind of stories and those are some of the kids who end up in alternative school we think oh they're just bad but what else mm -hmm. what is beneath that what is the source of that so much of the, the content that i develop developing is coming from a real place you know i do put a lot of creative license on it and make it unique and make it interesting for audiences but i'm coming from something real something that's that's connected and, and built in and centered around real life. Wow, mm -hmm. wow. So I guess I wanna ask this question. Your films and your TV, is it based on, I mean, how you say, African-American stories or do you do everyone? African-American stories, because it says, you know, you know, in school they talk about, write, write about what you know. That's an experience that I know. I've lived that experience in so many different contexts, from the military, living in different parts of the country, traveling with the Navy in different parts of the world. So I'm pulling from my experience as a black person on one end. Another end, for so long, others have controlled our narrative. Um, there were other professionals in storytelling who told the world who black people were or we're this and we're that right but now that we get an opportunity to produce write and direct our own stories we can share our humanity globally from our point of view 
you know, because I will never know what it's like to give birth because I've never had that experience. But I do know what it's like to be a, a, a black person in this dynamic of America. And I can write from that. I can produce from that and direct from that and create from that, you know. And I think it it broadens the context of how we are seen in the world because, you know, in many ways, and I, me and my colleagues talk about this a lot, in many ways, I think George Floyd was killed because of perception. Mm -hmm. Because for so many, you know, years, media images, movie images, television images have said black women are this and black men are that. And it was a very narrow view of who we are, right? So now you go out into the world, black men are super predators, black men are thugs, or black oh men are God. dangerous, black men will rob you, black men are boom. So you hear that on the news every day and you see it in movies, you see it in television shows. When you see a black man, you automatically, because it's, it's coming at you. This is who they are. This is who they are. So with independent producers like myself and many of my colleagues, we get to tell the full scope of our humanity, our love, our beauty, our fathering, yes. our struggle, our vulnerability, you know, the different types. I love what Donald Glover did with his show Atlanta. We haven't seen that kind of black man or Issa Rae. Look at what um, the, the, the dynamic of what uh, Barry Jenkins is doing. So many different voices of color telling a broad spectrum of black stories. So for so many generations, we, we haven't had an opportunity to share our humanity with the world, and now we do. So that's, that's a focus for me. I can't be everything to everybody, but that's something that I know I can do and I can do well. Oh, absolutely. So that's a focus for me. Absolutely. Viewers, I want you, I mean, well, listeners, should I say, I want you to call into 404-361-1571. Again, that number is 404-361-1571. If you have any questions, if you're an author, authoress um you're trying to get to another level you want to be in film now is the time call in speak to mr anthony page ask questions he is incredible he's genuine and he really wants to work with you mm -hmm. black business is is what it's about now and just um i'm spotlighting black businesses amen so what are you working on now um, I'm working on a, uh, we just finished a, a comedy, a feature comedy that my team's a production, we were producers on, and it's called Thought Therapy. So we shot a feature film in four days. So thought we decided, therapy? Thought therapy, you know, yeah, it's, it's yeah, kind of secular. Explain, explain. Well, thought is that <laughs> over there, you know, that H word, you know, that woman over there, but that oh, over there. So oh. that's, that's a kind of a colloquialism that the young people use. Um, but it's, it's not a vulgar work at all. It's actually, it's, it's, it's actually a romantic comedy. It's a love story. Really? Um, but the name is catchy. We think that name will attract attention. So we just finished that. But I'm, my next thing I'm directing is called Remembering Mama. It's Ooh. about a young woman um, who has early onset Alzheimer's disease. Hmm. And um, her husband come home. They've been married about 20 plus years. And her husband comes home and for the first time she doesn't recognize him. Oh. And it's, it's heartbreaking because they've had a beautiful romance and a beautiful life together. And he walks in to his home and she thinks he's an intruder. So she calls the police and it becomes like a Black Lives Matter moment because she genuinely doesn't recognize him. Oh my God. Uh, you, you know, and, and we see the toll it takes on him is the love of his life is just, because of Alzheimer's, it's just fading away a little bit at a time. So that's why it's called Remembering Mama. It's, it's a very powerful story. We go into production at the end of this month. Really? Really dynamic talent. We got Mickey Mac is gonna be the mother. And um, a gentleman named Wes Lee is going to be the father. And they are dynamite. I think it's really? going to be a breakout role for both of them. Okay, okay. That is incredible. So what is the weight limit if someone, um, they have their book, they're doing their thing, and now they want to take it to film? It's not going to be overnight. Um, it, you you got to build an infrastructure just like you can't, you know, in the Bible says you can't build a house on sand, it'll shift. Right. You've got to make sure your foundation is strong. And you got to check your motives. If you, if you go into it, you want to be rich and famous. Mm -mm. But if you go into it with a pure motive, because it's a lot of work, people come to me and they're more in what I call, they're, they're interested in the shine, but not the grind. Gotcha. So they want gotcha. the shine. They want the red carpet stuff and they can see themselves on the red carpet. But when it comes down to doing the due diligence and the work, it's like, oh. You know, I'm up at four o'clock in the morning getting it in. And, you know, sometimes I, I hear people, you say, um, all right, we're going to be, you know, we got a call time at 6 a.m. 6 a.m. Oh, I'm sleeping. Da, da, da. But <laughs> how committed are you? How much do you want it? How right. bad do you want it? Because we're competing with storytellers from all over the world. 
Okay. You know, just because you think your story is 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 fantastic, you got to put that work because there's somebody in Florida who thinks their story is fantastic too, and 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 Tokyo and you know South Africa and all of those people are competing for attention, trying to get them to pay up, trying to get people to pay attention to their stories. Okay. So. What I'm saying is you got to be committed at every level. Build your foundation and you got to be able to be willing to put the work because it can happen. Black audiences over index in television, you know, because more often than not, we don't do symphony, we don't do ballet, we don't hunt as much, we don't often have beach houses, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We do some of those things, but not to the numbers that our counterparts do. So a big chunk of entertainment time for black audiences is television. They go to work, they come home, they have some family time, got some dinner going, and then they'll sit down in front of that television and boom. Absolutely. So you put complex black characters and stories on television, there's a, a ripe, active audience there to watch it. Okay. Who, who would rather see themselves and their stories being reflected. You know, because for so long we watched Donna Reed and Gilligan's Islands and My Three Sons yeah. and those are great shows but we truly weren't reflected in no, that. No it wasn't. You know. So would you write the script or you get with the person, the author whomever and you write the script together? It's, yeah it's a combination of things it's definitely a collaborative process um, we will write it if we have to but it's better to kind of connect to the spirit and the truth of what that person was intending when they wrote whatever that work is. And, it, and it, we, we really just focus on structuring. And being independent, I'm also thinking about budget. Like, do we need an explosion here? Do we need a police car here? Because you got to rent all that stuff if you go into production. Mm -hmm. Do we need 12 locations? Can we do it in three locations? So that's the kinds of things that we're thinking about. Can we tell this a story effectively if we get limited resources? So that's my model. Even if we don't get that big investor, that big network who wants to come in and, and, and get behind this project. Can we still get this project done? So I'm always thinking thrift, you know, not letting anything stop me. What came to me in that, because I remember, I, again, I was I, I said I felt deeply that God was telling me to do this. But I was thinking that the blessing was going to come in the form of a big check. Somebody's going to just write me a big check. I'm going to make this big movie and it's going to be. But I realized many of those blessings didn't come in the form of money. They came in the form of, oh, this young lady will let you use her venue. They're willing to volunteer, help you. This person will help you with marketing. And before I know it, a lot of those gaps that I thought I, I needed money for, a full team. God was bringing resources in other ways. So when I produce, I always look 360. I'm like, all right, Father, where's the resource to get this done? And so, and things come in untraditional and unorthodox ways, but we always find a way to get it done. There's so many people, there's so many intangible resources outside of money that you can use to get a project done. That's true. That's true. I'm, I'm always talking about barter. I'm good for bartering. Right. Absolutely. absolutely. Co collaborative economics. Yes. For real. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Okay. Okay. So once, once it's done, script wrote, the miniseries, the movie, the trailer, the whatever. Do you take their information and then market it to yeah, Amazon? We, yeah, Netflix? we've done that. Um, there's there's ways that you can do it. Um, I'm just getting started on that end because I've been more. I've been in theater for so long. You mm -hmm. know, we developed little shows and we would because I know if I do a play, I can sell a ticket. You put all that money into a film, there's no guarantee that you can make money off of that. Yeah, you made a great film or television show, but how do you monetize it? Because distribution was a big issue before. Mm -hmm. But over the last couple of years, because of Netflix, streaming just totally transformed the industry. And now there's about 2,000 networks actively looking for content because we're in an evolution right now where the old Comcast model of you pay Comcast, whatever. And this is no shade on Comcast. It's just you pay cable and get 30 40 50 channels and you pay that monthly people are doing a la carte now so give me hulu give me hbo give me right and they're just paying ten dollars a month to, that's to, it so that cycle is changing right so they're all fighting for market share right now that's why you see they're going actively after beyonce's concert or they're paying you know you know shonda rhimes they're pulling her away from abc to mm -hmm. get her on netflix because shonda rhimes has a huge audience you know tyler perry going over to what is now bet plus because yeah. these people have audience because if you establish a habit and a pattern with an audience maybe mm -hmm. they'll stick with it because i know my mom for example is has service with at&t phone service okay. she's been paying giving at&t 
month, money every month for 40 plus years. So imagine that Netflix understands that if I can get Dr. Pat to like Netflix, she's going to give us 10, 12, $15 a month for the next, for the rest of her life. Right. Because she likes what, and it just becomes a bill. So now they've got you as a loyal supporter and they're able to grow their company from that. So they want content that's going to help them do that. So good content creators who can create great black stories to get those black audiences in there because they understand that's an important demographic. Oh, right. Yeah. So they're looking for those types of things. And there's others. I don't know if you have like smart TV and you get beyond the high, you know, the, the regular channel. Yes. You get all the way up there. And there's so many channels just with the original shows. Some are little travel shows and lifestyle shows, but some are narratives content. So there is an opportunity to connect your project to a larger audience. But again, goes back to what I said in the beginning. That's why infrastructure is important. The secret to Tyler Perry's success was numbers. It wasn't like he's a great storyteller, but it wasn't like he was the most phenomenal storyteller and had the most phenomenal characters in the world. Tyler Perry understood his audience and he served them well. He interacted with them. He sent emails to them. He had social media engagement with them. He built a connection with his audience and his absolutely. audience absolutely loved it. And that's who bought him that studio. Their patronage of his content bought him that studio. So the focus should be on your audience. Who is this for? And spend your time with the audience. One th the final thing I'll say, a lot of times the peers, they spend all their time with, with the industry heavyweights. You know, they want to get to know this director and this producer, and that's mm. good, but that's 1% of your audience. Focus right. on your 99. Exactly. You get those school teachers liking what you do, and you get those truck drivers liking what you do, and those airport workers and mm -hmm. government workers. And if your numbers are robust, they're coming for you, coming. bottom line. Because if you walk into a, a pitch meeting and you got 10 million followers, you have built in marketing for anything that you create. Because you can send one e-blast, 10 million people, one post, 10 million people, whatever that is. And they know that because that's the hard part of it is with so many people creating content and videos all the time, how do I separate myself from the competition? How do I get people to pay attention to what I'm doing? Because Hollywood can spend $20 million on a marketing campaign and somebody puts up a cat video with their phone that goes viral. Right. <laughs> you know, and they spent $10 million and this person just a cat video and it's, it's viral. That's incredible. So they said now they understand now attention is currency. So if you're coming in the door and you've already got attention on your pro your project, that's an asset for you. That's a negotiating point for you. So that's why I said that's where the infrastructure comes in. People are like, oh, I don't do social media like that. Well, you're losing out an opportunity to take advantage you of need free, to. free marketing. Because that's what you know. made the Kardashians. Absolutely. They are social media queens. They are yes. professional with it. She had a best-selling book of selfies. Yes. You take selfies. I take selfies. But right. she had a best-selling book based on selfies. Yes. That's it. You see what that's I mean? That's it. Because she had an audience. Really? Yeah, wow. Yeah, absolutely. That is incredible. That is incredible. Wow. Wow. Um. Oh, well, we got a few more minutes. Okay. Come on, guys. 404-361-1571. Again, that number is 404-361-1571. If you're trying to do something, if you're trying to get to that level, you want to make a film, now is the time. Reach out to Mr. Page. What is the name of your company again? Uh, Blue Bistro Creative. Um, okay. And the reason I say Blue Bistro Creative instead of film or theater is because I do so many different things. But the process is the same for me. It just manifests itself in different ways. Because um, I do stage plays and involved now in independent television and film, but I also do graphic design and project management. Like sometimes we do a lot of live events. I've done some music festivals, curated art shows, and people are like, you're all over the place. But to me, it's, it's like chicken. So film may be barbecue chicken, whereas theater may be fried chicken. But you know, the process, the creative process it's for me same. is the same. It just manifests itself in different ways. I just love to create. So that's why it's Blue Bistro Creative. It's a, it's a, an amalgamation, a convergence of all that creativity that may come out of me in, in some way. And then I gravitate towards, you know, other creative collaborators and we create, we create all kinds of stuff. Wow. 